I have some green tea latte. Another day in the workshop. I've got some more notes over here on my board. Got a uh, fire going. It is interesting. I still get daily questions. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of videos out there, so I get, you know, lots of comments every day, and I, I read every single one of them. People are just baffled by why I have brake rotors on the top of my wood stove. This provides a thermal mass. These rotors are, are cast iron, and most wood stoves are very, very heavy cast iron. They absorb a lot of heat, and they radiate a lot of heat out into the room. There's a lot of people out there that are not familiar with making a fire. I was lucky enough that my dad installed a wood stove into the house that I grew up in. He put a full-on wood-burning stove in our basement, built this big brick surround, and built the, his own chimney, and we heated our house with wood. So from my entire youth until I moved when I was 18, every night of every winter you know one of us made a fire in the family split wood split kindling every single night uh, sometimes we would go get the firewood load it into a trailer bring it home stack it sometimes we'd have it delivered in a huge dump truck and just dump it into the backyard and we'd i mean it was just a massive massive pile and every piece had to be stacked. I remember going out to the wheel, or not going out to the wood pile with the wheelbarrow. We have to fill up the wheelbarrow every night, bring it back to the house, and my dad would load me up, and he'd stack them in my arms, and I'd go stack them next to the fireplace, because, you know, it gets pretty cold. These days, people don't have that. Hardly any houses have a wood burning stove, wood burning fireplace. Really, the only place you can find one is in an old house, and a lot of times they they haven't been used in a long time. Probably like a, a cabin in the woods, you know, at like a ski resort, that type of setting. It's the only place you're going to find a true wood-burning stove or a wood-burning fireplace. Puts out quite a bit of heat. There's another mug on the website that I like better than this one. And I think I've got another one of those on order. I've changed things up a little bit. Still going with three separate boxes for transportation. I'm going with one face frame. I have that face frame drawn out right here. Got to be very, very precise, especially on the width. 28 and 9 16 is the width of all these rails. And then we have 98 and a half. It's going to be a pretty big situation to paint and carry. But I think I'll be able to do it. I'm going to have to paint it uh, laying down. I usually paint these things uh, hanging. So yeah, I have to paint this laying down. I'd like to build the box, but I uh, can't build the box today. I went to the hardwood store, a new hardwood store. I called ahead. They said they had exactly what I needed. I went there. They bring, they bring out the forklift. We start loading them on. And I start saying, man, these things just don't look... They just don't look perfect. That's something you're gonna run into at different lumber yards, is the longer these things sit around, somehow the more damage they get. And the last one they were getting to load on was just was just messed up. And uh, I said, ah, you got another one? Now this one's all scratched up, I can't use it. So they go back and to get another one, and I get underneath them, I slide them out to the end of the tailgate. The, the finished side was, was down, so I couldn't see if, the, if there were scratches, if there was any scratches. They were all jacked up. He comes back with the forklift. I'm sorry, but I can't use these. I have three more three quarter inch sheets of plywood on will call at the hardwood store that I got the first batch at. Should have just went there to begin with. The way these rails are attached to the styles, 
is with pocket holes. Now the last time I used this, I had it set up for half inch. So you have to reset the collar using this depth gauge here on the side and you need to uh, reset your drill guide. It's getting warm in here. It is 77 degrees. It's probably the last bit of wood I'll have to put on the fire because this is within oh, 20, 30 minutes of being done for tonight. Uh, I'll have to uh, prep everything, fill up, fill all the seams, sand it, tack it off, and, and paint it, obviously. But for for tonight, it's about done. I gotta turn the uh, the suction on so it gets really loud. I'll turn the volume down for you. Give you something pleasant to listen to. It's on, holy cow. So this opening um, has got to be exactly, what does it say, 40, 42 and 3 sixteenths minimum, 42 and a quarter maximum. And this is going to be the bottom part of the opening. So 42.
Okay, 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 I think you had a little bit of light flooding in from over there. But this is what it's going to look like. I just have it clamped up here with one clamp. And everything looks good, except so far I've made two mistakes. Easily correctable mistakes. Uh, does anybody know what they are? You have a keen eye. P put down below. What I what what was my big mis yeah, they're like I said they're easily correctable. It would have been easier to do it as I was building than after the fact. It'll probably take easily 30 maybe 40 minutes to uh, fully rectify the situation. So I'm not sure if where we're at in these videos. If this is it, if it's not it, until the next one. It looks. It looks really good. All the reveals are looking good. Oh boy. 